All right, so today we are just going to do the eye and getting my picture pulled up here. So it's gonna be probably more simple in colors. I do not believe that this eye has a whole lot of reflection going on in it, but that will be the trick is for us to, to get the eye not looking like a black hole. So as long as we can do that, then we're doing good. With that being said, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at if there is a reflection. So there are two little reflectors and um, again, this eye is literally just about as big as my fingernail here. So, so, we're, so we're still kind of tiny. So there's a little reflection there and there's a little itty bit right underneath the eyelashes. So we're probably gonna go ahead and uh, dent those eyelashes out. Go ahead and erase a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna use my tiniest one I have. Now the eyelashes don't start all the way up here. They start a little bit farther down. And I think I'm just gonna do a couple. Say a couple and here I am like doing a whole bunch. There we go. And they're about the same size as the other ones. Okay. All right, next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab my powdered blue. And I do have a sky blue, but I think we might just be able to get away with our powdered blue. And I'm gonna add it in right where I had marked it earlier. And since I already indented, my eyelashes, I get to just easily make a little spot right there. You won't be able to really tell until we get darker colors. And next thing we're going to do is around this area right there. Hi, Percy. It's my doggy. Hi, puppy. How are you? I know when I'm done, you're going to get your nom nom noms. Yes. <laughs> He's a good boy. Hiding underneath my covers. Yes. Okay. Anyway, sorry, distraction. <laughs> so we're gonna get, can I erase this a little bit, get out of there. Ah, what does it, oh. Make sure your kneaded eraser's cleaned out so you don't accidentally poke yourself with random things that are hidden in it. I had a pencil shaving that was like stuck in it about poked me. All right, it's probably as, as good as we're gonna get. Oh, uh, I do want to add a white base to this. Go ahead, do, 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 do. You can do circular motions, you can just slap it on there. All right, again, I probably wouldn't like go like this. Just focus, you know, you're working on a really tiny area, right? So it's tiny areas are easier to mess yeah, easier to make mistakes in your eyes if you want to see mistakes as, as mistakes or just, I just say, oops, and I just kind of work around it and we just go with it. Because <laughs> what kind of, sometimes once it's down on paper, that's it. So, and then we're going to come over here and I'm going to add our gold color. Cause there's like a gold, I think it's the reflection of his leg out in front of him. Uh, but I can't a hundred percent tell. But the reason why I did the white first was so that I can ease into the color that I want. Okay. gonna go ahead uh that eye is a is a dark color so we're gonna go ahead and probably do our dark umber i don't think i want to do our raisin color or our black raspberry i might save this for the eyelashes 
probably stick with our uh, blue and our black. And one second. <laughs> Always losing pencils. I get this like nice drawer for my colored pencils and I don't know where some of my pencils go. I think it's just because it's the black one and I have a black, oh, there it is. I have a black desk and so sometimes I feel like they blend into my black desk. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna sharpen this just a little bit and we're going to gently uh, get the eye quote unquote outlined. I call it like doing the eyeliner. Actually, this eye has quite a bit of highlight on the eyelid down at the bottom. I like to add white as a base. We're going to take our powdered blue. Go over that white. Circle back around. I think that's a good start. And then now we get to start shaping in our eye here. I think our last eye took us uh, maybe 40 minutes. So this eye might take us just as long. Now on this eye, you can't really tell where the uh, pupil is. It's it is very dark. It's it's very shadowy. So I do want it to make it look like it is more shadowed. Like there isn't a whole lot going on reflective wise on this side of the eye. And then he has this little eyelid. Her, she, it. I don't. I do not know what gender this little fool is. So we can kind of start to see the eye is coming to life. Yeah, that's my favorite part. The eye is coming to life. I do have to say, unless you're working on a really big scale, like let's say if this, instead of 11 by 14, and if I was just doing like the full, this guy right here, or even just like this section of the eye, and it was huge, yes, of course I'd be able to fit in more detail. When it's so small, there are some things that you might not just be able to fit in, and that's okay, because when you step back and you look at it, uh, your brain does a wonderful thing. It helps us artists fills in our little gaps that we can't get. So right now I am, sometimes when I pick up a color and, and I've kind of already started with that color, I try to map out some of the other locations that this color may be. I do that one to help make sure I don't go uh too big with my current plan and that my base colors are generally the same because of the certain look that I'm going for which is which is uh realistic it's not hyper realistic. Uh, if I was trying to go for hyper realistic, I would probably be doing something completely different. 
and we'd probably still be stuck on the face. And I don't, when if I'm doing a commission, I usually don't work like the whole face at once, especially if it's like a portrait. But this is uh, an original drawing, so I am just just kind of having fun with it, not being too picky, <laughs> and just saying, you know what, this is my horse, and this is what I want to show the world, some things that I can do. And then we'll just go from there. But you can already see just the base color. I mean, I don't. I I have just like one layer of color on this eye, and some people would be like, "Oh, okay, I'm done," and that's fine if that's as far as you want to go. If you're like, you know what, I just I don't want to put a whole lot of layers down. I just want to do a very lack for a better term, like pat not pastel. What's the word? Maybe like a light feeling. You know what I mean? It doesn't always have to be so heavy. It doesn't always have to be rich with color. You know, some people, uh, some artists have different styles. And that's okay. If we were all the same, we want to be called art. He's starting to come to life. Oh, this is so exciting. Sometimes throughout the day, like, you know, I, I walk for eight hours straight, basically. Five days a week, sometimes six days a week. And sometimes it's not even eight hours. Sometimes it's 10 hours, right? Uh, so I do work a lot. And sometimes thinking about drawing, it's like, uh, like, like I want to, but then there's like always that... Like, oh, man, like, I got to do this, 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 this. But then when I sit down, once I sit down, I know, once I sit down, it's like the weight of today is gone. And my focus is this little full right in front of me. Nothing more other than my dog wanting food, but that's besides the point. <laughs> And I get to just chill and work on this, my own little world. And hopefully one day I'll have the horses again. And then I'll be able to teach little kids and or people of all ages how to ride, share my love and passion for horses, and maybe have art as my full time. Who knows? <laughs> You know, when I'm 50 and I don't feel like walking around for eight hours a day. Oh, this is so cool. I, I think people really overthink things. Like, don't overthink it. And if you have to, like, you know what would be probably a good idea? I gotta start writing these video ideas down. I think I wrote down the last one. But I think I accidentally threw that paper away, so it doesn't even matter. I, so you have a picture, right? Like a printout. And cut that picture into squares. And label the squares. And then just do one square at a time. To train yourself to just focus on one area and get that area right. And or try different techniques and different squares. Oh, that's a good idea. Don't steal my ideas. No, I'm kidding. Someone's probably already done it. Anyway. All right, so I'm going to add some blue in here because it is cooler on this side. So on the other eye, I don't think I added uh, this denim blue. So that's going to help us distinguish what is the warm side and what is the cool side. And yes, you can have a warm and a cool object in one in one sitting. So you can have like the really warm sun, but maybe it's a little bit later in the day and it's not blazing hot and or maybe you're halfway shaded in a cooler area and it just feels cool or maybe there's a lot of blues so you just gotta pay attention to how the picture makes you feel if the picture makes you feel 
like, oh, this feels like nice and cozy. Maybe there's a lot of warm colors. If you look at a picture and you're like, ooh, that reminds me of like, like, uh, I don't know, like maybe you got like a brain freeze or something and you're just like, ooh, and you like start to shiver. Maybe it's a little bit cooler. There, there are other colors that make cool other than blue and red. So there's, oh, actually that reminds me, there's a whole color wheel here that I do have. Oh my gosh, that is so close. I'm sorry for how big it is, but you have all of these colors on here and we can kind of see that towards the cooler side, I have used cool colors, right? That kind of like kind of matches a little bit of some of the colors I've used, kind of a little bit more purpley, and that's fine. I like purple. Purple's a little bit more richer in color. And then maybe like, let's see, on the other side here, you can see I've used a little bit more oranges. I don't think I really used any yellows, but you can see it's a little bit warmer, but it's still kind of within that range. Now, if I would have used green of some sort, I think that would, I think it would definitely make it look weird. So yeah, that would definitely look weird. And then our white, that would be on, I think on this side. I don't think white is on here. Oh, no, it is. It's, it's in the middle. <laughs> anyway. So having a color wheel can help uh, make sure that you got those hues, right? Your saturation, right? And a general tone in your shades. You got your tints. There's, I mean, there's a whole thing on color theory. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my black here. And because this is such a small area, I am not going to use any solvents. I just... I personally am afraid that I will somehow get all this black over my nice little fur area I got going on. Okay, the other thing, where is it? I'm gonna t Hello? Yeah, she went to the grocery store. No, I'm just recording. I can delete this later. Oh, okay. You're okay. Bye, Dad. <laughs> okay, so the other thing, I'm going to use this Dermot Cormaflow Glacier Blue. And I'm going to go in the direction that I see the grains on his little island here. It's up and down, back and forth. And there's a little bit up here too, but I'm going to go with the flow of his eye. We've already got some down here. There are some little highlights down here. Go ahead. We'll add those in. Cool. Now I am going to go through and add all of our darker colors and we'll do the eyelashes last. Okay, I'm going to go in with my light umber and slowly add it in. I think I would like to take my raspberry color and add in this little, he's got a, horses usually have this like little divot right uh, between their 
it's kind of uh, okay it's kind of cool because like sometimes when they chew this uh, i forget what i forget what causes it but um you can see this like so it's a divot right it's like a little concave and sometimes when they chew you can see it like like pulls out <laughs> horses are so funny if you've ever watched someone like eat like they're sometimes like their dimples move that's kind of like what it is So I am still going in with the raspberry color. Doing it very lightly now. As I get kind of closer to the lighter areas on his cheek. Her cheek, its cheek. We're just going to make it easy and call it a boy. Just a little bit up through there. I think I am going to add this to the eye. And I want to take, oh, let me think. I don't want to take a, a brush, but I think I want to take one of my little blending stumps. I'm not going to put anything on it. I'm basically just going to help this little highlight here. I, I want it to be a little bit more blended in and not so strong. I think we're getting there. Work on this back area just a little bit. I'm gonna add some Tuscan red in there. Cause again, it's gonna be, be reflecting our horse's leg here. And there is a little bit of a reddish uh, tint to their leg. Then to top it off, go back in with our gold color. Smooth it out. I think I am going to actually add this little bit of yellow in there. Woo, I took off the whole lid of my sharpener. That was close. I'm adding in a cream color, it's not necessarily yellow. Actually, I wonder if this one would work better. I have a sunburst yellow that's a little bit more vibrant, it's a little bit more color, and I think this will work. As long as I don't break my pencil, but you can see I'm just adding it right in there and it's starting to come in. Just right into the highlight. There we go. Now, since I got those in there, I'm going to take... Oh, let's see. I'm going to take my black. And now I get to shape this. I like shaping around highlights. I 
think it's easier. Make the highlight too big, and then you can just cut back little by little until you get what you want. And I want this to be just a little sliver, like a little peekaboo. I'm going to cut back a little bit more on this side. There. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, I'm done. <sighs> no, I'm kidding. I'm going to take a dark gray. I think I'm going to take my slate gray here. My little cool slate gray. And we're going to add it in here. And there's a little bit on the top here. There's definitely some down here. Some right here. Now, so I've added that like little bit of black before. So this is helping uh, me map where, like, it helped me map where I want this gray to go. Okay. I'm going to take our dark umber. I'm going to give it just a little bit of a sharpen, not too much. Holding my paper down with my hand. Sometimes the middle of the paper likes to kind of bump up a little bit. So I just hold it down. It's a pizzy. I think we about got this eye in there. I'm gonna, now that I have a chance, I can go through and dial these down a little bit. And then we gotta finish up around the eye. Let's see. I see some blues. I do see some purples, but I don't wanna add purple just quite yet. Adding some Tuscan red.
part. So what's really cool is that his little cheek, he's got a cute little cheek back here. Take my orange and actually this gold color. And his little cheek starts about kind of right here. And it goes up and it meets right underneath his eye. Just a little bit of one. Take our pumpkin color. I know I said I was just going to do the eye, but now I'm told you, now I'm motivated. We're not quite done with the eye. I'm just letting my brain rest from looking at the eye for so long. Oh. Sorry, you can't, you cannot see me, but I am doing, there, that is what I did. <laughs> Sorry. So... From what my picture is telling me, I'm getting still kind of like his for color, but maybe um, it's not as shaded. Maybe there's a different light source reflecting and hitting his uh, cheek uh, right here a little bit differently. Maybe it's not shaded per se. Oh, I don't want to use that. That's a little too bright. Go back to our gold. Kind of just using this gold to kind of help blend in the cheek area. Grabbing my terracotta. He's gonna have a cute little cheek in there. I would like to grab a pencil that is not soft. Give me one second, see if I can find it over my drawers here. Is this it? Oh yeah. So I found my uh, hard line pencil. Hard line pencil? My harder waxed uh, Prismacolor pencil. We're just going to add in some of the little fur gaps here, little hair gaps.
It's not really too much up that way. Taking my gold, going it over again. Just kind of softens it up. So you can see, oops, sorry, I'm a little, little crooked there. Starting to come together, yeah. Haven't done this yet. Uh, we're gonna go in and add the eyelashes and the, oh, excuse me, the other uh, darker colors in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're we'll zoom back in. There we go. Leave it a little patchy. Right up there. And then I want this to darken up. All those little hairs to darken up with it. I'm gonna zoom out. Oop, sorry. Boot my camera. Zoom out just a little bit. Oh, sorry, I cracked my fingers. Oh, that felt so good. I'm gonna take our peach color and gently add that in. Taking my light umber. I feel confident enough that I have enough lighter tones for our little veins. That now that when I add my light umber, they will not disappear, they'll just be lightly accented. Cool, and I'm going to try to tie together uh, this cheek and other part of the face. <laughs> 
Sorry, verbiage is escaping me right at the moment. Because they are connected, so... It's not like it just all of a sudden... Oh, there's a cheek there. There's my pink. I'm gonna slip in my pink. Peach, sorry, it's not pink. And I want to I think I still want to add a little bit more purple color. Right here. It's not really purple, but it's trying. <laughs> it's trying. Where, oh, where did my colors go? They all disappeared. Whoa. My door's falling out. Alright, I got my dark purple. Didn't think it would have to come to this, but it has. I've got my dark purple. It looks like the same thing as the, the color I just used. It's okay, we're gonna take some dark um, un, uh, umber on it. It's a little bit darker down that way. Eat. Slowly moving on down to the muzzle. Once I get the neck in, I feel like what I did with the chin will make sense. I actually see, I would like to add a little bit more delicata up here. Just to kind of help, I'm just adding in uh, a little bit of the uh, the neck in behind the color here, just to help us visually see, like, what the heck is going on?
So those are just the uh, hairs on the neck. Okay. Now that we've had a second away from the Sai, we are going back to it. And we're just going to add some of the little final touches. I'm adding in the uh, lashes. This little guy's got a lot of eyelashes. Oh, I had a really pretty blue. Oh, there it is. So what I added was uh, Prismacolor Light Aqua. And then I'm going to add uh, our sky blue on top of that. Going in with my black, finishing up the, what I call the eyeliner. <laughs> now you do want to kind of blend out this eyeliner. You don't want it just to be a, a block. Sometimes kind of following it down through the eyelashes helps. And sometimes coming across the top of the eyelid helps as well. And we got a nice crest right here as it hides away. Mm, I want to take my blue. Where, oh, where did my blue go? This one will work. This is ultramarine. Oh, 
somebody's home. My dog is going crazy. All right, and then let me refocus this. And there you go. Um, I can add, <laughs> he's got this really cool gnarly, whoop, little, <laughs> little lash going on here. I think that's cool. <laughs> Let's see, where is my... There it is. Don't know if he's got any at the top. He might. This little guy definitely needs his little whisker shaved. So basically what I did, I should just add a little bit of whiskers there. Uh, I could probably add a little bit over here too. See. You want to add too many. All right. Well, okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Um, I'll catch you guys on the next one. The next time, will we either do the muzzle or we will do the ears at the top there. So, focus. There it goes. So, thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, catch you on the next part. Bye.